か。あなたに知っんでんでんでんでんでんでんでんでんでんでんでん Shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light, 
He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the, light, the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even when they rejected him, but to all who believed and accepted him, he gave the, uh, the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with the physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So, the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about. And when I said, someone is coming after me who is far greater than I, for he existed long before me. From his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but... The unique one who is himself God is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leader sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, Who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well then, who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we're expecting? No. Then who are you? We need to answer for those who sent us. What do we have to say about what do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah. I am a voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way for the Lord's coming. Then the Pharisees who had sent asked him, if you're not, if you aren't the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize? John told them, I baptize with water, but right here is here, but right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize, though his ministry follows mine. I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandal. This encounter took place in Bethany, an area east of the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of, the God, uh, of God who takes away sin of the world. He is the one I was talking about. When I said, A man is coming after me who is far greater than I, for he existed long before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I have been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. I didn't know he was the one. But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one whom I will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testified that he is 
the chosen one of God. The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men whom uh, was one of these men who heard what John uh, said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth? exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see uh, for yourself, Philip replied. And, excuse me, as they approached, Jesus said, Now, here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus asked him, Do you believe this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth, you all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. <laughs> Hello. Chapter 2. The next day. There was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Standing by, nearby, were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, Fill the jars with water. Then, excuse me, when the jars had been filled, he said, Now, dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though, of course, the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over 
A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then, when everyone has a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. Mm. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. It was nearly the time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers coins over the floor and turned over their tables then going over to the people who sold doves he told them get these things out of here stop turning my father's house into a marketplace then his disciples remembered the prophecy from scriptures passion for god's house will consume me but the Jewish leaders demanded, What are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied, Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. What? They exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you want to rebuild it? In, excuse me. You can rebuild it in three days? But when Jesus said this temple, he meant his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this and believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Because of this miraculous sign Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust in him. But Jesus didn't trust in them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. Hi, how are you, Brother Steve? Yeah, ask a question. I'm all about it. I'm going to go ahead and continue reading. John chapter 3. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So, don't be surprised when I say, you must be born again. The winds blow wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You 
are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things, I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And Moses was lifted up, excuse me, and Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness. So the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him but Anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. The judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light. And refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right to to the uh, but those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. Then Jesus and his disciples left Jerusalem, went to the Judean countryside. Jesus spent some time. Uh, with them there, baptizing people. At this time, John the Baptist was baptizing near Anon, near Salem, Salim, excuse me, because there is plenty of water there. The people kept coming to him for baptism. This was before John was thrown into prison. A debate broke out between John's disciples and a certain Jew over ceremonial cleansing. So John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan, the one you identified as the Messiah, is also baptizing people. And everyone is going to him instead of coming to us. John replied, No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You, yourselves, know how plainly I told you I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride, and the bridegroom's friend is simply glad to stand with him, and he hears vows. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. He has come above and is greater than anyone else. We are of the earth, and we speak of earthly things, but he has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else. He testifies about what he has seen and heard. But how few believe what he tells them? Anyone who accepts his testimony can affirm that God is true, for he sent for he is sent by God. He speaks God's words. For he excuse me, for God gives him the spirit without limit. The Father loves His Son and has put everything into His hands. And anyone who believes 
in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. Hi, Sister Patty. Thank you for all the likes. I'm just reading. I'm just reading. No teaching, just reading. John chapter 4 Jesus and the Samaritan woman Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John though Jesus himself didn't baptize them his disciples did so he left Judea and returned to Galilee he had gone through uh, Samaria on the way eventually he came to the samaritan village of uh sychar near the field that jacob gave to his son joseph jacob's well was there and jesus tired from the long walk sat wearily beside the well about noontime soon a samaritan woman came to draw water and jesus said Please give me a drink. He was alone at that time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift of God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask him and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you are greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I will never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. Go get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me why is it that you, Jews, insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here uh, at Mount uh, Gerzim where our ancestors worship. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews, but the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that day. For God is spirit. So, 
those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then, his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid, excuse me, the harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvest alike, harvester alike? You know the saying, one plants, another harvests. And it is true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for a few days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then the woman said then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now, we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. At the end of the two days, Jesus went to Galilee, and he himself um, had said that a prophet is not honored in his own hometown yet. The Galileans welcomed him, for they had been in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration and had seen everything he had done there, he had did there. As he traveled through Galilee, he came to Cana, where he had turned the water into wine. There was a government official uh, in nearby Capernaum, whose son was very sick. He urged that Jesus had come from, he heard, excuse me, when he heard Jesus uh, that had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal uh, him, to heal his son who was about to die. Jesus asked, will you never believe in me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? The official pleaded, Lord, please come now before my little boy dies. And Jesus told him, go back home. Your son will live. And the man believed what Jesus said and started home. While the man, uh, yeah, while the man was on his way home, some of his servants met him with the news that his son was alive and well. He asked them, when the boy had begun to get better, and they replied, Yesterday afternoon, 
At one o'clock, his fever suddenly disappeared. And the father realized that was the very time Jesus had told him, your son will live. And he and his entire household believed in Jesus. This was the second miraculous sign Jesus did in Galilee after coming from Judea. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Wonderful. John chapter 5. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the sheep gate, was the pool of Bethsaida with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been that, been ill for a long time, he asked him, Would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool. When the water bubbles up, someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath, so the Jewish leaders objected. They said, to the man who was cured. You can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. But he replied, the man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that, they demanded. The man didn't know. For Jesus disappeared into the crowd. But afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, Now you are well, so stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. Then the man went and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had healed him. So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules. <coughs> Excuse me. But Jesus replied, my father is always working and so am I. So the Jewish leaders tried all the harder to find a way to kill him. For he knew not, for he not only broke the Sabbath, he called God his father thereby making himself equal with God. So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him everything he is doing. In fact, the father will show him how to do even greater works then healing this man, then you will truly be astonished. For just as the Father gives life to those he raises from the dead, so the Son gives life to anyone who wants. In addition, the Father judges no one. Instead, he has given the Son absolute authority to judge so that everyone will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son is certainly not honoring the Father. Who sent him? I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. 
they will never be commended, con excuse me, condemned. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. I assure you that the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. The Father has life in himself, and he has granted the same life-giving power to his Son, and he has given him authority to judge everyone because he is the Son of Man. Don't be surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's Son, and they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life, and those who have continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. And if I were to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid. But someone else who also testifies about me, and I assure you that everything he says about me is true. In fact, you sent investigators to listen to John the Baptist, and his testimony about me was true. Of course, I have no need of human witnesses. But I will say these things so that you might be saved. John was like a burning and shining lamp, and you were excited for a while about his message. But I have a greater witness than John. My teachings and my miracles the Father gave me these works to accomplish, and they proved that he sent me and the father who sent me has testified about me himself you have heard never heard his voice or seen him face to face and you do not have his message in your heart because you did not believe me the one he sent to you you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me. Yet, you refuse to come to me to receive this life. Your approval means nothing to me, because I know you don't have God's love within you. For I come to you in my Father's name, and you have rejected me. Yet, if others come in their own name, You'll gladly welcome them. No wonder you can't believe, for you gladly honor each other, but don't care about the honor that comes from the one who alone is God. Yet, it isn't I who accuse you before the Father. Moses will accuse you. Yes, Moses, in whom you put your hopes. If you really believed Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. But since you don't believe uh, what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Oh, yikes. 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 Chapter 6. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs and he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly the time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd 
of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. <laughs> then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, uh, spoke up. There was a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fishes. But what good is it with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. They picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw them, saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw uh, that they were ready to force him to be the king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the shore to wait for him. But as darkness fell and Jesus still hadn't come back, they got into the boat and headed across the lake toward Capernaum. Soon, a gale swept down upon them. The sea grew very rough. They had rowed three or four miles when suddenly they saw Jesus walking on the water toward the boat. They were terrified, but he called out to them, Don't be afraid. I'm here. Then they were eager to let him in the boat, and immediately they arrived at their destination. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the far sh shore saw that the disciples had taken the only... I'll try that again. The next day, the crowd had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken only boat, and they realized Jesus had not gone with them several boats. Uh, from Tiberias landed near the pal uh, the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, We want to perform God's work too. What should we do? Jesus told them, This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in him. Excuse me. Believe in the one he has sent. They answered, Show us miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all our ancestors ate manna, while they journeyed through the wilderness, the scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, 
My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives his life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, those the Father have given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all of those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that uh, all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement, and he said, I am the bread that comes down from heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, Stop complaining about what I said, for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And at that last day, I will raise them up. As it is written in the scriptures, they will be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I, who was sent from God, have seen him. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in wilderness, but they died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I offer so the world may live is in my flesh. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh, drinks my blood, has eternal life. I will raise that person at the last day, for my flesh is true food, and my blood is true food drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that comes down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though They ate the manna, but will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Many of his disciples said, This is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining, so he said to them, Does this offend you? Then, What will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you don't believe me. 
For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. And he said to, then he said, That is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to live, leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe, and we know you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus said, I choose the twelve of you, but one is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, one of the twelve who would later betray him. That's intense. That is intense. So intense. Thank you, Sister Patty. I, I am very thankful. Thank you. I think, uh, I think I'm out of gas now on, on, on reading. I'll pick this up, uh, again later on, but John is intense. John is, is spirit. Hello. How are you? Thank you for, for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, I, I think I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not a guest. I love reading this stuff. I love reading his word. I just love just his word. And I'm thankful to you guys for being here and listening, uh, to the word. Okay. I'll be back later. Y'all have a good day.